Um, yeah, we sell a lot of fish here, but I have no idea about the overfishing problem. Nothing. I really don't, unfortunately. So folks, I think it's pretty obvious that we have an issue here that not many people know about. More than 85% of the world's fisheries are threatened and are in need of strict management plans. Why does this even matter? Half of the world's population lives within 50 miles from a coastline, making it obvious that fisheries provide a crucial food source and livelihood to many people. As the demand for seafood grows with population, so does the competition for its resource. I think it's time to talk about it. Okay, so let's rewind. Fisheries are what we refer to as a common pool resource. Common pool resources are those that are non-excludable and rivaled in consumption. These resources often lead to a situation called the tragedy of the commons. Garrett Hardin first outlined the reality that each man uses as many resources as he can in a world that doesn't have an infinite amount of resources to give. The idea is that a reasonable human is individually compelled to act in his own best interest while exploiting resources, even though this is not in the best interests of the whole. In relation to fisheries, this tragedy of the commons occurs because there are individual incentives to take as many fish as possible without any regard for the other players involved. With the addition of new technology each year and the high demand for fish, individual fishermen now have a much higher capacity for harvesting as many fish as they please. However, over time, global catch is actually declining. More people are entering the market, making it very difficult for these fish to reproduce and continue their population. Not only is there a collective action problem, but there is another market failure associated with fishing known as negative externalities. Negative externalities is a cost suffered by a third party as a result of an economic transaction. In other words, private benefits outweigh social benefits. One of these is a decrease in food security. Fish provides more than 2.9 billion people around the world with more than 20% of their, of their protein. That's a lot of food. Thanks, Bryce. Let's talk about some other negative externalities. There's also marine life imbalance associated with overfishing. Removing just one species can have major effects on the entire food chain. Another negative externality is the effects that overfishing has on coastal communities and their welfare. For example, over 40,000 jobs were lost with the collapse of just one cod fishery that was overfished. The destruction of marine environments is also a negative externality. For example, using fishing gear such as bottom trawls can completely wipe out environments on the bottom of the ocean. The last negative externality we're going to talk about is bycatch. Oftentimes, species that aren't intended to be caught can be harmed and even die in the process. Let's bring it over to Amanda to learn about another negative externality associated with overfishing. Thanks, Anna. Let's talk about the last market failure, asymmetric information, which is a source of market failure that can arise when all of the economic agents involved don't have the same level of information. Fishermen, for example, may not know the size of fish stocks and, as a result, overfish these current stocks. Furthermore, information about stocks and human interactions is not always trustworthy, which inhibits proper management strategies. More than 85% of the world's fisheries are threatened and in need of strict management plans to restore them. People are worried about benefits in the short run, but they're not worried about the depletion of the oceans for future generations or the long run. So let's talk about some solutions. There are three main solutions to problems associated with common pool resources. First off, you can assign property rights to an otherwise common resource. Secondly, you can form private agreements for everyone to abide by. And lastly, the government can implement regulations. For example, individual transferable quotas can be allotted and individual players can trade these as long as the derived resource remains under the total allowable catch. Additionally, the actual nature of the resource can be altered to exclude outsiders. For example, Alaskan salmon and halibut fisheries have what's called limited entry, meaning that only a cer certain number of boats are allowed to participate in the market, which allows for sustainable growth of the populations. Another policy option is to completely close off areas to fishermen. Shutdowns could be effective in depleted areas or in areas with significant bycatch problems. Perhaps most importantly, governance for a common resource must be adaptive and informative in order to keep up with the changing environment and, and decrease asymmetric information. As human population and consumption grows, there is greater strain placed on the resources in the world's oceans. In order for the tragedy to end, it is important that everyone realize the issue and understand that negative externalities associated with overfishing affects our entire world. 
Fisheries must be regulated so that individuals do not treat them as limitless and then de deplete the future resource. Looks like your time's running out. Thanks for listening.